please join me in welcoming Jane Carlier. Thank you. Okay. No, no. But I, I have two topics, so you know what? I should get more than 15 minutes. Um, I have the two fun topics. You know the topics that nobody likes to talk about because they're too controversial. Uh, and that is life and religious liberty. However, having sat in the State House and, and being president of New Hampshire Right to Life, I've learned to be kind of bold in this. And I will tell you that we will only see results in making strides with life and religious liberty when we straighten our spine and we smile and we jump into the debate. Um, we have many challenges, of course, that we all know about. No one here has to talk to you about Constitution and, and our rights to you know, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And of course, the last two don't happen if we don't have life. So um, going from that point, um, I think that for anybody that might be entering into the State House or entering into a primary, if you do get asked questions about this, it's just my personal belief that it's always best to not back up, but to actually meet the question and give it the best answer you have. Uh, don't avoid the question, because these are very important topics that go well beyond abortion. We don't know that because the, the press and the media won't tell you this. But baby boomers, we're facing an awful lot of issues with the slow care because of cost provisions. Where did that come from? That comes from because we do not respect life in its full spectrum. And we have to understand that if we're going to get into the debate. So we know that there's been 60, over 60 million babies aborted through Roe v. Wade since 73. According, and this was very interesting, According to a 2016 uh, AP survey, AP, millennials today lean more pro-life than the generation preceding them because of advances in medical technology and science. There has been a 12% decline nationwide in support for abortion since 2010, including in highly progressive states such as New York, Washington, and Oregon. Two-thirds of Americans oppose late-term abortions, and 60% of women generally oppose abortion after 20 weeks. Of course, we live in a politically correct um, and a growing secularized culture, and life has taken on such a negative connotation with public servants and with citizens, we try or we have a tendency to avoid the conversation altogether. What we have done when we do that is that we have marginalized the majority. We're in the majority. Why would we allow our voices to be halted when we hold the majority? And it's simply because the, the, the secularized portion, the progressive part of our, of our culture is trying very hard to shut us down, make us sit down. We have to stand up. Our job is to stand and educate with a spine and with a smile, and to do so with facts and vision. Without life, there is no liberty. Personhood is on our, is in the Republican platform. And as Republicans, we should embrace personhood. We shouldn't be afraid of it. Personhood asserts that everybody pre-born up until a natural death is, is treated with dignity all the way through the life spectrum. And when I know that I'm facing my last, my last time here on this earth, I certainly want to know that nobody is getting between me and my doctor and making decisions that could terminate my life simply because being older, I'm not paying into the tax situation anymore. And you know what? It costs too much. Let's just slow care this out. This is where we're heading, and we need to stand up to it. We do not have time to talk about the full life spectrum, obviously, here. But as public servants, we need to stand for liberty, and we need to attach the two together. Pro-life is no longer about just abortion. We have a terrible standing for life here in New Hampshire. Isn't that a terrible? Live free or die, right? We saw many, many, many good life bills go down in our house this past session. Good bills which address many different concerns, which weren't even necessarily pertinent whether you were pro-life or pro-choice. They were common sense, good legislative bills. A solid, a solid fetal homicide bill is a necessity here in New Hampshire. We're one of three states in this country that has no fetal homicide bill. What a shame. Shame on us for that. We, the parents of babies that are, that are killed through an illegal action, illegal action, should be able to receive justice. 
in the courts that may be counted as a person, certainly to that family, and we should not be saying that that's something we should not have in the books here in New Hampshire. Three states, shame on New Hampshire. We have terrible, terrible reporting of abortion statistics and inspections here in New Hampshire. Do you know that abortion clinics are not inspected in this state by the state? Who knows what's going on in those clinics? We have no abortion stats, one of four states that has no abortion stats that are given to the federal uh, centers of disease control. And this is a matter of public health. We need to obtain the aggregate data with, a, with, of course, protection for confidentiality of anybody that's within the data. But we can do this. We just need to lead. New Hampshire needs to have common sense laws on the books which govern this. This isn't controversial. Don't shy away from it. New Hampshire should, jo should join the majority of other states which hold some sort of post-viability law with regard to late-term abortions. Uh, 41 states currently have post-viability laws on the books. Okay, we need to look at that. Why are we shy about, about doing something which we know when you take a poll, most 60% of women and men, I'm sure, are very light in that number, will support that. Why are we afraid of it? We need to get the job done. We need a post-viability law. And let me put the caveat in here. As a New Hampshire Right to Life president, I advocate protection from conception to natural death. We advocate that. However, 41 states at least have a 20-week uh, or a post-viability, 27, 20-week, they're in that general vicinity, law for post-viability. Of course, one doesn't even have to be pro-life to support prohibiting funding for abortion here in New Hampshire. The taxpayer should not be on the hook for funding private business. Don't, you don't even have to go into the pro-life debate. It doesn't matter, it's a bad practice. Mom and pop shop down the street, the bakery that we all love to go to, doesn't get tax funding. Why does Planned Parenthood and these other abortion clinics? It is not a matter of women's health. Do not buy that canard, it is a lie. New Hampshire has over, I think at the last count, it was 49 free or low cost health clinics that give full range of women's health care without promoting abortion. There is plenty of access here in this state, folks. There's over 90, 9,200 free clinics in this country. This is an argument that the left will make to shut you down. Well, are you against women's health care? No, I'm for women's health care. I'm also for the New Hampshire taxpayer. Give it right back. We won't win if we don't fight them in the, in the circle of ideas. It is wrong. Even people that are pro-choice are coming around to seeing this, that it's wrong to be supporting these, these abortion factories here in New Hampshire and abroad. By the way, they do not offer mammograms. There isn't one Planned Parenthood that has the equipment to do a mammogram. And 90% of everything they do, they send out. Those, all those, those little numbers that you get that says it's only, you know, what, 7% of their funding is a lot of hooey. Most of their profit is given up to, I believe it was 70% of the profit is given through abortions at Planned Parenthood. And the only reason that they come up with those numbers that make it look little is because they count the, the first walk into the clinic. They count the talking to the nurse as, as a number of activity. So all of this other activity is counted into those numbers, and the actual abortion is the one, one thing that they'll use for the abortion number, which makes it look like, oh, that's only 7%. No, 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 no. This may be six or seven visits that are attached to that abortion that they're not giving. They're lying to you. They're lying to everybody, and we should stop it. Boom, easy. So there are times when religious liberty comes up with abortion and of course the topic of religious liberty, something that our founders based our founding on. Why are we afraid to, to say that we are a, a religious, we have a religious underpinning in our founding documents? Because it's true. And polls absolutely prove that the majority of Americans believe in God or a higher power. This is always a good starting point in the discussion. <coughs> We currently have an unconstitutional bill in the abortion buffer zone, bu bu abortion buffer law on our books. In 214, the, the Supreme Court in Massachusetts had a very similar bill. They voted that, they, they said that bill was unconstitutional, that law was unconstitutional, Massachusetts had to strike it. 
During that whole debate, New Hampshire put one on the books. We went to every, every meeting you could go to in, in the State House, and we said, why are we pushing this bill through when Massachusetts is going to go to the Supreme Court and it's probably going to be found unconstitutional? We were told, shut up and sit down. They put the bill in the books. Now, why hasn't Maggie Hassan put anything into to go behind that law that's on the books? Why won't she enforce it? Because she knows that the second she enforces it, it goes to the Supreme Court, and guess what? The taxpayers can pay for that bill, too. It's an unconstitutional bill. Fight for it. Get off the life, the life thing that they want you, the boondoggle with, that monkey's on your back. Don't let them put it there. You face them and you look them in the eye. It's unconstitutional. Get it off the books. We have the right to practice religious liberty. We need religious liberty rights for medical personnel. And mind you, if you think it's only the medical personnel that we're talking about because they don't want to give abortion drugs or participate in an abortion, think again. If you're a parent and they deem that you as a parent have to vaccinate your children, guess what? They're going to get vaccinated. What if you have somebody that needed certain medical treatment and they were declined, or you, you didn't want a specific treatment offered? That's coming down the pike. So all of this religious liberty, which, which we seem to run from, we need to embrace protecting the individual rights of conscience. Should we be forced to pay for other people's medical treatment if it goes against our religious beliefs? Of course not. So let's engage in that discussion. We have got to become the loudest voices in the debate. Not mean, not angry, but loud. Loud enough to, to say, you know, I believe this. And guess what? A lot of times those bullies, they back down when you do it. Euthanasia You don't huge. want euthanasia here in New Hampshire. It is a subtle form of killing those under the guise of compassion. It, we have palliative care that can ensure that people are not in pain and can give them dignity of life free from pain. If somebody is depressed or very ill, are we going to really judge that they're the best one to judge whether or not they should end their life at that moment of their, of their, of their worst? No, because that's not what, it's not about compassion. It's not about compassion, it's about power. And it's about government holding that power over our heads and we need to say no. We should not support any form of euthanasia here in New Hampshire. So, um, look at that. I'm almost done. Um, I have cards. If anybody would like to take a card, you can contact me. I'm happy to give you any kind of numbers or uh, resources that you might need to fight the fight. Um, should you get into the State House, we will certainly need your voice and happy to help you with anything should that happen. So, Thank you so much. My, my pleasure. Yeah.